ipmnation.com. You're from another world, and I love to be alone. Hello, is this Matt? Hello, yes. Matt, welcome to Matt hey, Connerton Matt. Unleashed. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank no, it, it's great to talk to you. Um, I I, uh, I don't know if you heard any of it, but I opened the show uh, with this track, IWMU, because, um, uh, frankly, it's one of the catchiest things I've heard in a long time. I, I really, really like it. And uh, we're, we're going to play, uh, we'll play another song, of course, at the end of the segment, but... Um, and now, and you guys are from uh, New York City, correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And how many uh, how many people are in the band? Um, we're kind of a uh, bit of a rotating lineup these days. Oh, so there are uh, four of us. Okay. So uh, we got uh, Barry Marino on the drums. Uh, Demma Paxton Fofong is our bassist. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jason Katzenstein plays keyboards, and I. have Sing and play guitar. Very good. And we have uh, Kendra L. Saunders just uh, popped into the, the Facebook live chat. She says, uh, yay, I got here in time. So well done, Kendra. Hey, Kendra. <laughs> how, did, how did you and Kendra meet, by the way? Because she's the one who connected us. Uh, Kendra works at the Footlight, mm-hmm. which is a bar uh, in my neighborhood. And we have played there several times. 
Yeah, I think that's how we met. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think that's what she had uh, she had mentioned actually. So, very cool. So, um, I, I want to ask you about your sound. Um, I noticed. Um, I mean, I you know what I hear in your music is it's. Um, I don't know if I mean maybe it's because of the the keyboards, but um, it reminds me a little bit of. Uh, I don't know if anyone even uses this term anymore, but it was a term that was used a lot when I was growing up. New wave. Um, but I also kind of I get a little bit of like fits and the tantrums from it and, and, and whatnot. But when I was looking at your Bandcamp uh, page at Bandcamp.com, I noticed it said um, one of the things it said was anxiety pop, which is not a term I'm familiar with. But what is anxiety pop? Yeah, um, we coined that. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if that was a good idea or, or a bad idea, <laughs> but uh, we... Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I think, you know, the new wave thing mm -hmm. you mentioned, obviously we lo love a lot of new wave bands like, you know, Talking Heads. Oh, one of my favorites. One, yeah. and, oh yeah, absolutely, we love them. And yeah. it's just the kind of nervy, uh, you know, it, it like um, neurotic everyman kind of persona that David Byrne <laughs> kind of embodied embodied yeah is that's that's kind of uh, a, a big reference point for us when we're thinking about you know writing music and the lyrics to come from that same kind of um place i think probably yeah a lot of people can relate to that yeah no doubt no doubt um no i like the term anxiety pop i think that's cool and uh and and um I mean, do you have, uh, is it difficult talking about, um, what you guys sound like? Cause I, I listen to a number of different tracks and I mean, there's definitely, uh, you can tell there's a range of influences. You know, you're one of those, uh, uh, bands that not everything kind of sounds the same. You know, like a lot of bands, you kind of, you know, you hear, you might hear, uh, several different tracks and you can kind of, you know, the through line is obvious and, you know, it's like, okay, they have a specific sound that they're, kind of trying to stick with but i hear a lot of variance in your music which i think is really cool but i mean is that intentional do you guys set out to to kind of keep it a little extra interesting that way or does it just come naturally i mean i'm glad i'm glad that you you feel that way yeah. i think we definitely wear our influences on our sleeves i mean i, I think you know none of us have any sort of um we're not trying to pull a fast one. You yeah. Know, if, 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 like we love, we love, you know, Prince and that yeah. I think comes through and, and a lot of the songs and, and, you know, we love like blur yep. and LCD sound system and our newer stuff kind of reflects that. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, I think like a band like LCD sound system, you know, they always, you know, there, there was never, you know, any, any attempt to, to hide their influences. You right. know, the, the songs that sounded like David Bowie sounded like David Bowie on purpose. And I think right. we kind of have the same, the same approach. You know, we don't want to be, you know, ripping off any of our heroes, but yeah. at the same time, it's, it's definitely gratifying if you hear, you know, bits and pieces of things that are familiar. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now how long have, uh, how long has this project uh, been going? Um, in one form or another since 2014. Okay. Actually. Oh, okay. So you've been at it a little while. Yeah, we've been around for a while. We, we definitely, you know, been playing shows in New York for, for, you know, several years and seen a lot of places come and go and yeah. bands come and go. And it's, <laughs> you know, I think we're all glad to still be doing it. Yeah. What is your live show like? Because I, I would imagine that, um, I, I would imagine that your music lends itself to some, you know, I mean, you, you probably, I'm guessing you don't just get up and play. There's probably some sort of visual aspect to it or, or maybe not. I don't know. But what, what is your live show like? I mean, we'd love to have more of a visual aspect, but you know, we, you know, when it's, I think our live shows are pretty, you know, when we we play at the Footlight, for instance, it's pretty um, intimate. You know, yeah, we're playing at small clubs, and it's more about you know we we um, 
you know, we, we like direct pop songs. So yeah, yeah. I think our approach to playing live is just let's let's try to like give as many get as many songs in as we can and yeah. keep a minimum of fuss and just <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's there's no there's no light show, there's no pyrotechnics. Yet. Yeah, r- r- yet, right. Yeah, because I can imagine you guys um, in in a big place, you know, in an arena with lots of uh, lots of cool effects. But I can definitely also imagine, you know, in a, in a small place, just just you know, playing the songs and like you said, being very sort of you know direct with the audience, which is um, which is cool. Do you guys tour outside of New York, or do you kind of? I mean, obviously, if you're in New York, you don't. It's not like you need to venture out a lot. Um, you know, you're in the the uh, greatest uh, city in the world, but I mean, do you have you gone on tour anywhere outside of there? Yeah, we we did a tour um, last summer. We oh. went uh, uh, just up and down the East Coast from from Maine to DC. Oh wow, very um, cool. Good this year. Yeah, that was great. I mean, we love we love doing that. We love playing here, but obviously, getting out of town is kind of part of the fun yeah and uh this year we will be um well we're working on some some uh dates uh in some more far-flung places so hopefully we'll have news about that uh excellent very soon. but yeah. we're excited we're excited to tour more yeah good uh kendra in the uh, facebook live chat says they make music uh that is great for dancing um thanks kendra there you go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's definitely the goal that's definitely what we want we want to you know if we see people dancing at the shows we know we're doing a good job <laughs> um is it uh is it ever a challenge to find other acts i mean probably not in new york because you've got a lot of of, of you probably you got all kinds of people but is it ever a challenge to find other acts to to share shows with that you're compatible with because you know in some in some genres, like if you're a metal band, just as an example, you know, there's a million metal bands all around you that you can hook up and do shows with. You know what I mean? Just as one example. But what you're doing is, um, you know, is is not as common, um, the the genre that you're working in. Um, is that ever a challenge to find other artists that you're compatible with for live shows? Yeah, actually. Um, and that's not a, you know, there's a, you know, a million great bands in New York and yeah. a lot of our friends, you, you know, uh, but our main kind of gripe is that we, you know, we're, we're not a, a pop band. So, yeah. Um, I mean, we love pop. You know, we love pop, obviously. Yeah. It's evident, you know, from our, our music that we love that, but you know, we're, we, uh, you know, we're, we're a, a scrappy band. Mm-hmm. We're a, you know, we love like the, the, the kind of new wave, and punk bands that you mentioned before, you know, that we're, we are, our skills are more comparable to a band. Like, you know, our, uh, our, we're, we're just never going to be polished enough to play with a, uh, a pop band. Yeah. But we're also, you know, there's a lot of great garage rock and punk rock and yeah. a lot of our friends play in edgy, you know, harder bands and we don't yeah. really fit in over there either huh. so we kind of uh, it is a little bit of a challenge to find bands that kind of are are uh mining the same territory obviously there's a million out there but um it's not it is like an interesting challenge but we don't you know i like when we are paired with bands that sound nothing like us it's nice <laughs> to play shows where where there's you know a couple different kinds of music on the bill i, I think there's no reason why you know, you should go to a show and have to see the same set three times in a row. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I used to do um, I used to do a lot of uh, concert promotion, and my favorite shows to put together were the ones where you know it wasn't just going to be like a night of metal or you know a night of just acoustic singer songwriters, but you know, really kind of uh, kind of mixing it up a little bit. I always thought that was. From my perspective, that was more fun, risky, but it was more fun. You know, it was more interesting, but also too to see somebody who doesn't quite fit in, kind of um, win over a crowd, is always very satisfying. And I'm sure from your perspective, when you're in a situations like when you're in a situation like that, I mean, that must be 
part of the fun of the challenge, right? Part of what makes it makes it exciting is, you know, let's let's go and you know, we're going to win these people over. Totally. I think we definitely have kind of an underdog attitude mm. um, about that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, it's definitely, if we've ever won anybody over, it's, I'm very glad <laughs> to have done it. And we've definitely played some shows where we did not win the audience over. And that's, <laughs> you know, the character. And it's yeah. kind of almost fun to get in people's face and just <laughs> play your set and, and uh, just let the chips fall where they may. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Those, you're right about that being a character builder. Um, I, I know, I know from some of my own experience how that, how that goes for sure. Um, I think a lot of musicians oh, yeah. can, can relate to that. Um, and, and sure. tell me a little bit about the production because, um, every, everything I've, I've listened to that you guys put out, I mean, the, the production's fantastic. Do you, I mean, is everything, is, is everything self-produced? Do you work with a producer? How does, tell me about your recording process a little bit because the stuff just sounds great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's definitely uh, one person is responsible for that is our friend Andrew Lappin is the one uh, who produced all of our uh, recordings. Andrew, is, yeah, Andrew Lappin. He's an um, amazing producer. Uh, his, his star has definitely risen a lot. Mm. He works with a lot of... Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who he's working with oh. <laughs> right now, but he's... He, he, he's a friend, and we met him uh, kind of by chance when we were just starting out and getting ready to record. Huh. So, you know, we kind of fell into working with this guy who has turned out to be like a really amazing, uh, you know, producer, engineer, mixer. Um, and we were, I guess, one of the first projects he worked on when he was like really launching his career so oh wow uh, we were kind of grandfathered into working with this guy who you know and, and he does do a great job and the yeah. recordings come out very polished and uh you know it's 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 kind of an interesting contrast with the way we approach the live show and mm. and uh and the whole ethos of the band it's 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 really uh kind of uh interesting to to have to live up to these like incredible recordings that he puts together but yeah he he recorded and mixed everything okay and and is that does that apply to absolutely everything you guys have online yeah yeah okay. um there may be like one or two really old demos still mm. floating around but all of our stuff on spotify is, is uh is uh has his um imprimatur yeah so yeah, he's nice. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a dear friend, and he's a talented dude. No, he does a great job. I mean, you know, just sitting here, here listening to that track I played earlier with the headphones, it was like, wow, this sounds really, really good. Um, what do you have at now? That that song IWMU is that from? Um, is that from the EP? Because you guys had an EP, right? Previously, yeah, yeah. We our EP came out last year. It's called Past Lives, um, and that's first track okay okay and then um now what about because in a in a minute i'm gonna play uh when when we wrap up i'm, I'm gonna play another track from you guys i'm gonna play the song party which i really really love is that also on that ep or is that newer mm, that's new that's a newer song okay so that that's um yeah that parties we're we're really excited about um that song as kind of a indication of where we're going next yeah um so that's a single we released at the end of last year okay um and it's gonna be uh uh yeah it's like the first single from our upcoming full length oh very good and uh why why the decision to um do a full length this time in, instead of another ep uh you know well it's it's kind of just a, a theoretical full length right now. I mean, oh, okay. We're, uh, we're excited to, you know, just keep releasing singles for the moment. And, uh, and, you know, eventually, um, you know, I think we're all looking forward to just kind of cherry picking the nine <laughs> songs that we want to put on a record and, yeah. And, um, but you know, it's, it's, there doesn't seem to be a reason to, to do, um, but there doesn't seem to be like a practical reason to do a full length record 
yeah in this day and age unless if you have a creative reason to you know to make an album that that's like thematically connected then that's probably the only reason to do it so we're we're right now excited about just doing a bunch of singles and we have a bunch more music that we're ready uh we're getting ready to release um hopefully uh in springtime oh excellent yeah it, it's interesting you know we live in an era where um you know I, I don't know how old you are but you know i'm old enough to remember when it was like you know bands you know they, they put out an album and it was almost always a full length occasionally an ep but usually a full length and then they go on tour you know and then a couple of years later there's another full length and it's and that was the pattern and you know today we live in an era where you've really got all kinds of options and uh, you know, I've noticed, especially over the last couple of years, a lot of artists in an interview, there's there's a trend of really kind of kind of approaching it the way the way you were just talking about. You know, maybe you put out uh, a series of singles and then eventually uh, those singles will comprise uh, a full length. But for now, you're just putting them out individually. And it kind of I think what's smart about that approach is it helps to kind of feed that, uh, you know, once you have that momentum going online, you've got fans, you've got. Uh, new people that are um, that are discovering you along the way, you know, you want to keep giving them content, keep giving them new stuff to to keep them interested. And and um, no, I, th- I think it's a very sound strategy. And and also as someone who became a fast fan, uh, I'm uh, selfishly uh, glad that uh, <laughs> you know we don't have to wait uh, for a full length to, to hear new music from you. So that's that's great. Are are you guys constantly writing, or is it more just kind of when you? Um, when you get the urge, you oh, all get yeah. together and write. Yeah, and thank you for that, by the way. Oh but yeah, yeah we're, of course. Yeah, we're definitely always writing. So, you know, it's nice to not have to wait to mm-hmm. to release something, and it's and in, instead of uh, having to set up an an album months in advance, you know, we can just kind of throw some stuff on the internet if we feel like it, and um, you know, that's not been our style up to this point, but it's nice. Uh, it's nice to have that option available, you know, not be tied into any sort of like album cycle right. mentality. Right, exactly. Yeah. Have you guys done any videos, by the way? Or are there, are there any uh, videos for the tracks that you've released? Yeah, or? yeah. We we have videos for a bunch of our old tracks. There's a video for the song Yours and Mine. Okay. Uh, which is one of our older songs. And, and uh, our friend Ethan Young directed that video. And he just, we just recently shot a video for Party with him. Oh, cool. Um, and so that's going to be uh, the next thing we're going to release. So hopefully uh, we're, we're kind of trying to to set up that um, uh, release for some time in the spring when we hmm. get ready to release new music. But it's a, it's a great video. Oh, cool. I think Kendra's seen it, so you can ask her. Oh, she got a sneak peek. Okay. But, <laughs> Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right, Matt. Well, uh, listen, uh, you've been generous with your time, but before we let you go, uh, please just um, let us know what we need to know about keeping up with you guys online, if there's a website we should be going to, and, and anything you want us to know about social media. And if you have any shows, you know, we're we're in Manchester, New Hampshire, but we have a lot of listeners online from uh, New York and, and other places. So uh, any shows that you want us to know about, too, that you want to promote, uh, please go for it. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're everywhere that, that uh, I think we're supposed to be. And we got a band camp. We got a SoundCloud. We got an Instagram. It's just wet leather. So I was very happy we got that wet leather handle. Something yeah. I'm not taking. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can find the music on, on band camp. And, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we're going to be announcing some shows soon. So if you, Keep an eye on our our Instagram page. That's where all the uh, the updates will will be happening. Yeah, and and you're very Googleable. You know, if you I, I found that if if you Google wet leather, it's it's easy to Ooh. find you guys. Oh, I do have to ask you too. One more thing: where, where does the name come from? Because I just love the name wet leather. That's <laughs> such a cool name. You know, it's just it it was definitely the, the most ridiculous thing that we could. <laughs> It was, it was it, yeah. We're, we're going to be having to live up to that name. 
yeah. the rest of our uh, life as a band. So it's good. <laughs> it gives us something to uh, aim for. It is. It's a fantastic name. So, no, I love it. All right, Matt. Well, we'll let you go. And uh, in a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this other track, Party, which is just uh, fantastic. But thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, oh, K- K- Kendra, by the way, says the video is amazing. So she's confirming that uh, she likes the video, um, but thank you so much. And let's um, let's stay in touch because when you when you have uh, maybe when the the video is ready to come out or you're heading out on tour or whatever, I'd love to have you back. And uh, let's stay in touch. And I look forward to hearing even more new music from you guys. That sounds great. Thank you for having me, Matt. All right, you got it, brother. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. I'm sure. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. All right, that was Matt from the band Wet Leather. And uh, Kendra, thank you so much for setting that up. And uh, that was cool. And uh, sounds like a good dude. Well, of course, I'm, I like musicians. I'm biased. Um, let's play this. This is, uh, I love this track even more uh, than the one I uh, played earlier. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll come back with more Unleashed. And don't forget, uh, in a bit, We're going to be joined in studio by members of the band Purging Sin. But uh, here it is. This is Wet Leather with Party.